Hello, Steve Barsick Amstel with High Tech Design Safety here. I'm going to talk about how to get your product listed, labeled, or certified. We've shifted gears from talking about the standards and the standards organization to actually dealing with what it's going to take to get your product listed. I realized in the middle of the night the other night that, like, telling you about the standards doesn't help. I need to tell you how to get your product designed and certified. So that's the new tact we're going to take with today's video. So the first thing you're going to want to figure out is what is the product? You probably already know that. Who uses the product? Probably already got an idea there. So um, example I'm going to use for this part of it is let's say you want to build a charging station for electrical vehicles. Great. So we know what the product is. We also know what the hazards are. Hazards with this thing are mainly electrical. There are probably some thermal hazards, might be some ergonomic hazards. Um, we, we know those. That's pretty easy to figure out for this. Who uses the product? Well, the general public. So why that matters is when you're building something for the general public, we have to be more careful in designing it to eliminate risks. If you're designing something for industrial use or laboratory use or commercial use, the people who are using it are expected to be trained and access to that equipment by the general public is limited. You get where I'm going here. Stuff for the general public needs to be designed more robust, um, needs to be kind of fail safe for things. And yeah, you get it. So then what standards do you need to use to get the product certified? Well, great question. We're going to show you how to do that. And in this, I'm going to go here and say, you got to scope and understand which standards you need. Buy those standards and get training on those standards. Even better is to get training on the standards for what you are particularly designing. So um, if we're working with an electrical standard on how to hook your, in this case, electrical vehicle charger to the power grid, we would talk specifically about that, not about generic power supplies for these types of machines. So get that training. And then you're going to design your equipment to incorporate the requirements of that standard. So let me show you here how we would go about finding that. One of the ways you would find those standards is to go to the UL standards um, homepage and then go through there and find all the electrical car charging standards. You can be electrical chargers, you know, see here there's going to be conduit standards and raceways and fittings and stuff like that. These standards you see on this screen are also going to roll in when you use these subcomponents in your product. Also, there's going to be IEC standards. IEC is going to cover pretty much the rest of the world and particularly, really, the European Union. Um, the European Union adopts IEC standards and calls them IEC EN or just EN standards, European norm. Now, here's the other way. Once you've figured out what you're going to use based on these standards, I would suggest looking at a comparable product. Now, these are copyrighted pages. I understand that. But it's fair use when we use those for training purposes. So what I would do is I would go out and look for another electric vehicle charging system. And then you see they've got UL listed down here. Well, then you would go over to the UL product direct, UL product directory, UL product IQ is what they call it. Put in that company name, pull it up, and then they're going to give you a guide to which particular standards are used for this product. That's going to be a pretty good go-to to let you know what the scope is. So that'll validate your scope. At this point, that validates your scope, and then you want to contract expertise to ensure that you're building the product in that correct direction towards those standards. Now, you may have someone on your team already who's a product safety person, 
that's their main role in your company is managing that, or you might not. Um, we deal with this across a lot of companies from startups to Fortune 100, and often it's best to either contract somebody or have somebody full-time on that. Now you're going to be designing your equipment to these standards. Our process is called the conformity discovery process, and that ensures that your product design, prototypes, and first articles meet the listing, labeling, and CE marking requirements as designed. You can use a similar process in your company, you know, checklists, um, ongoing product design reviews, things like that. That will allow you to know for sure that your product is meeting the standards as you're designing it, as you're prototyping and building it. Next, or even better, while you're going along, you need to be sure that you're getting the documentation in place. You gotta have the right labels, um, the right nameplate, you've gotta have manuals and installation instructions and specification sheets and all of that. And then rolled back into all of that when you're done with the certification process would be all those certification labels, markings, and details as well. Your technical construction file is going to include all of your materials and bombs and stuff like that. We'll get to that in detail. Now that you've got all of that built up and your product and you've got a first article or a prototype, You'll have a path forward for pre-testing and evaluation. So all that scoping we did before is now telling you what to pre-test, like the grounding. You know, on a um, on a vehicle charger, you're going to want to be sure it's grounded. You're probably going to have a plastic case. Um, you want to make sure that plastic case won't overheat, melt, thermal, catch fire. You want to check all your circuits, all of that. At this point, too, we're going to evaluate your documentation package, all the labeling. Make sure that everything is included with the product that needs to go through testing and evaluation. And then you can do these pre-tests alongside doing your prototype and alpha or pre-production prototype development to ensure that the design is met in the field. So, for example, let's say you've got a heat sink on the back of this thing. And you've put some vents there to allow air cooling. Well, we want to be sure the vents are not too big, but there's enough vents so that it doesn't overheat. You get the idea. Once all this is done, you're happy with the pre-testing and you've got alpha product development and you have samples, we're going to take it to the lab. You vetted it. You know it's ready. You know it's to take it to the lab. The previous process, we will have developed a PowerPoint or videos that explain how the product works and detail the safety features of the equipment. For example, like I said, anything that might overheat, not only that, but how that, if it does overheat, what happens? How is it fail safe? How does it prevent a fire? Um, you know, how, how do we prevent electrical shock? How do we prevent overcharging the batteries? All that detail we want to explain to the evaluator. We don't want them to have to learn it from looking at our design documentation and product. We want to be able to present it to them quickly and easily. And then we'd also like to present them with all the pretest data, pretest evaluation documentation, reports, and one file. And then set an hour or two aside with them to walk through, talk through the product and all of this material so that that evaluator knows that you're prepped for this that you've thought about it, and that you're willing to give them the information that they need in order to evaluate it. They'll complete their evaluation, and you'll get a listing. Might be a little back and forth at this point, but you'll be close then. And then it's time to celebrate. You will receive your listing and labeling, and it's ready. Your time to celebrate. So if you like the idea of this process and how to get your product to market more reliably, and you need a proven and tested path to conformance, contact us, please. Um, if not us, please get someone else involved. It's going to make your life so much better. You'll be able to hit those timelines and deliverables for your team. 
with confidence. And by spending a little bit of money up front, your results are going to be way better. Thank you so much. My name is Steve Barsick Amstel, and I'm with High Tech Design Safety.